Hello and welcome to Thread Hunting with Molly, where if it doesn't scare the crap out of your CEO or keep you up at night, you probably don't need to look for it. All right, so welcome to this episode. Uh, first out, I uh, want to say everyone who's watching or comes across this, uh, crazy times, damn crazy times, take care of yourself, reach out to community, whoever that is for you, uh, get your needs met, um, whatever that is, because uh, it'll pass, but I don't think anyone knows how long it's going to take. So uh, yeah, right? We care about each other. I care about you. So uh, take care of yourself. Now, this is going to be on RSA. Uh, I guess it was about three, three, four weeks ago. And it's been kind of rumbling around in my head while I process it. Because RSA, it's freaking crazy. It's, it's the first time I went, I didn't know what to expect. And it was as bizarre as I anticipated and sometimes more. As a threat hunter, I wanted to know if I'd get anything actionable out of it. You know, what was I going to pick up that I could bring back to my clients and uh, help out in their environment? So here are my impressions on RSA and what I got out of it. One of the most important things was I had access to ask important people important questions about security in our industry. That was invaluable. That would not have happened anywhere else for me. FBI, NSA, um, mayors of large towns, right? Um, police department directors, like that was useful to get their impressions. What was going on? General trends were kind of fun. You know, like I didn't know attribution against the Chinese was actually working. Fascinating. Uh, got to meet the head of security for uh, Saudi Arabian oil. She's badass. Oh my gosh. Um, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Threat hunting went to a couple on that. Uh, they were cloud focused, which was great. And also focused on the Capital One breach. Uh, particularly uh, the ones I saw were incorporated somehow um, AWS's meta services, right? So that was great. Brought something back. Was able to do some content. So. Now I'm going to share with you an experience that I had that shook me and inspired me. So second afternoon there, needed a break. Got some, got some free fish tacos. That was delightful. And then I went over to the Museum of Modern Art right next door. And there's an exhibit by Daywood, a wonderful, amazing photographer. Now, in this exhibit were people, people in two different times, 1960s and then today. The focus was primarily on African-Americans. And because of the artist's ability, when I looked at these photographs, the humanity of the people inside them shook me. Here I was going from RSA Big money, big suits, huge amounts of vendors. Everyone's got something to hawk. The conference itself is ridiculously expensive. And then all of a sudden being shown a reminder, normal people. And it made a connection. Security products, the big ones, the big companies that buy them, the big companies that buy them and then hire people like us to, to use them and hunt for things, they are almost part of our infrastructure at this point. And people, normal people, have to use them. Maybe it's to fill out a job application. Maybe it's trying to get a date. Maybe it's connecting with someone in their family over a media platform. Do the end users really have that much choice on the products they use? You can debate it. I don't think really. Savvy ones are going to be able to, but generally the people who just live, right, trying to get some food on the plate, love their families, take care of business, right, and they've got to use whatever everybody else uses. Now, let's tie that back to security. Those giant products, okay? The end user is reliant on their effectiveness, 
So when those vendors say, we can do this, 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 and this, they're not talking about me. They're, they shouldn't be talking to me. They shouldn't be talking to the CEO. They shouldn't be talking to anyone in procurement. They should be talking about the millions of people that have to put their personal information on the line because these security vendors said, hey, this is what we can do. And if you use us, you will protect their data. The end user. We can't forget about them. And I didn't see them a lot there. Didn't see them in talks. Didn't see them in conversations. Didn't see vendors bring them up. The theme for RSA was the human element. And there were some great talks about it. But as a defender, a threat hunter, I take this so serious because I am trying to find threats so that the people who use these services, their life doesn't get more difficult, right? Their grandparents don't get spammed because someone figured out how to put together a couple advertising networks and happens to know they're looking for a warranty. Okay. So in this time that magnifies the vulnerability of our population, and it magnifies that we are in this together, that there are elements that tie this entire world together. Security products, companies that use them, professionals like us who use them. You know, we can't forget about who we're protecting. And shame on you, security company, if you mislead someone in your ability to protect a company. I'm sorry, but that's criminal. Um, so yeah, that got kind of serious. But uh, anyway, that was what I had. I kind of had a breakdown a little bit, kind of shed a couple of tears because it directly impacts what we do so many lives. So yeah, anyway, let's keep getting better at it. Um, oh, cool little factoid I picked up um, that diversity. I always check out those parts because, eh, you know, 35% return on investment for a diverse workforce. With the caveat, if that diversity in the workforce feels inclusive enough to share their thoughts, 35%, that's a big chunk of change for anyone out there who might have a hand in hiring. So good to pay attention to. All right. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you tune in again. And I'm going to leave you with just a little ode to RSA. Another behemoth conference, decidedly extra financial, generously high end with illustriously jubilees. Keenly laudable moments were never overly peaky, quintessentially radical <sighs> to save the unvaliant, withering, xeric yodeling zombies. All right, take care, everyone, of yourselves, and uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, tune in for the next one.